Okay, so case studies, as I said, one of the three major strategies, along with surveys and experiments. What is a case study? <coughs> well, I'm going to borrow this definition from Colin Robson's book. Um, a case study is a strategy for doing research, there's no strategy coming out here, involves an empirical investigation of a particular contemporary phenomenon within its real life context using multiple sources of evidence. So let me just go back to some of those ter terms in turn. Um, a particular contemporary phenomenon. So it's, it's particular suggests there's one of them, although that's not always the case. Um, it might be several whatever it is, units, cases in a case study. It isn't always one case study. Sometimes it is, but can be several. And I'll talk about that in a later uh, slide. Some of the issues around how you choose the cases and, and, and what they mean in relation to each other. Contemporary phenomenon, and I think the word here, the important word here is the phenomenon. It, it, it's, a, it's a very general term, a phenomenon. So it means it's something that's going on. Um, and that phenomenon can be a person and often is a person, but it can be lots of other things too, other, other social phenomena, like organisations or events or places and so on. So it's some phenomenon, it's something happening or somebody doing something or some group of people doing something that you're studying. And of course it's contemporary, it's happening now, so you're studying it now, it's not a historical approach. Although of course I'm sure historians do use case studies as well. Next, you do it within its real-life context. And that's another key point, I think, about case studies, is the contextual aspect of it, that you're doing it in its context. And I think the biggest contrast there is with experiments, where you tend to do experiments in the lab. You tend to bring people in to your, your research institution, your university or whatever, to, as volunteers to work in your experiment, and often in the lab or, or some, some similar office or room to work in. In the case of case studies, it's very much a case of going out to wherever the phenomenon is. So wherever the people are, wherever the event is happening, wherever the institution is, you go out there and you, um, uh, you study it in its context. And in its context means also you bring into account all the contextual factors, the fact that it's operating or those people are operating in a wider world with things going on, things happening, things affecting them, they're affecting other things and so on. So all those kind of relationships are part of the, the context. And lastly, using multiple sources of evidence, um, and, and typically a case study, as I said, it's most common in the qualitative field. So it's very much associated with a lot of the qualitative approaches, such as interviews, observations, including particularly participant observation, ethnography. Um, but it can be other sources too, and probably the other major one that's used in case studies is documents. So if you're going into an organisation, you would typically talk to people, observe them doing the things they're doing, and perhaps collect the documents that they are keeping about their activities in that organisation. So, so work in, for example, uh, in commercial organisations, in a factory or an office, is a typical case study approach. You choose one site to do your work, that's the case. <laughs> Um, and then you collect information by talking to employees and collecting the data they're, that they're keeping about their activities, their, their, um, <coughs> their, their minutes of meetings and the, their other guidance documents they use. And, of course, you observe them doing what they're doing. OK, to go through the next few points, the case study may be descriptive, exploratory or explanatory. Actually, most research strategies can be this. Um, I talked very briefly about this last week with surveys. Surveys tend to be descriptive, but they can, if you ask the right kind of questions, be exploratory and even explanatory. The same is true of case studies. I mean, they are probably most well known for a, a kind of, um, I guess, an exploratory approach to things, the second one down here, where you're exploring an area, and in fact, the reason why people often use case studies is because not enough is known about the area to use any other kind of technique. You can't design a questionnaire unless you know what questions to ask. You can't design an experiment unless you know, you know basically how people are going to, to, to re respond within certain bounds to your, your experimental um, um, manipulations. But in the case of a case study, you can go in knowing almost nothing about what's going on and just start asking questions, observe things and so on. So it's a very open technique and very, very um, 
fits in very well with the kind of exploratory approach to, 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 to data collection. But it can also be descriptive. It, of course, you're writing up what you see there, so you're describing the situation. And also, it can be explanatory in the sense that you begin to understand why things are happening and therefore can explain them. So um, it may be not as powerful as an experiment, and when I come to that in, in, in a couple of weeks' time, you'll see experiments are probably um, the, the, the most powerful way of making judgments about causation and, and, and giving explanations for things. Um, but so can case studies do that as well. Um, uh, case studies can help you understand why people do certain things, what motivates them, um, how they explain what they're doing, and what kind of preceding activities lead them to do certain kinds of things. And in that sense, therefore, you're explaining what's going on as well. So all of these things come into account, although, as I say, I mean, exploration, finding out what's there in the first place, if you know nothing, is probably the, the primary motivation for a case study. And notice also it's focused on these two things, process, how was it done? And that, of course, fits in very nicely with the, um, the exploratory question, what's going on here, who's doing what to whom, uh, how are they doing it, and so on. And the outcome as well. Um, it, it can be used in a much more kind of um, uh, evaluative sense, uh, a case study. It can focus on whether something worked. If something's been changed, something's happened to people, or some event happens to them, um, then you can ask the questions of what was the outcome? What happened as a result of that thing going on? Um, so, I mean, to give you a, a simple example of how that might fit in with a case study, you might do a case study of an election. And, of course, in the election, you're asking how do people operate? How do they campaign? How do they support their, uh, their, 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 their politicians? Um, how do they get the vote out if it's a, a you know, uh, uh, that, that's an important aspect of what they're doing? Um, just think about the presidential elections at the moment. You know, how do the, the TV debates go on and so on? All those kind of things. Asking the, the first question, the process questions, how is it done? But, of course, it's an election. So you can also ask what was the outcome? You know, who won, why did they win, how did they get the vote out, you know, what kind of people voted and so on and so forth. All those kinds of, you know, questions about the, the outcome of the work as well. So a typical case study of, in that case, say, an election. <coughs> okay, so that's in outline what we're, we're, we're focusing on the case study. Let's, let's look at a bit more detail of these things. First of all, let me look at some classic examples of case studies, and just to show you really two things here. One is the, the range of different kinds of things, and I'll talk a bit more about that in later slides, but also to talk, uh, to, to give you some idea of, of, of the enormous kind of field that it, this covers. It is a big range of, of, of studies. Just to start with, um, one of the, the, the real classics, um, um, the, um, the individual case study, um, and this, um, this study, I've mentioned here, the Jack Roller. Um, this was a study um, done by, um, uh, by Stanley of um, a, um, well, it's in an American situation. It was in an American town um, back in, I think, I've actually forgotten the date now, but I think it was in the 1930s the study was actually done. So it is really a classic from a very long time ago. Um, and the Jack Roller was a particular character whom he, he researched, uh, the, 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 um, that was one of the, the terms used for this, this kind of guy, um, who was a bit, of a, a bit of a con man, kind of artist. Um, and um, the, the study kind of looked at him, his life, one single person case study. So the individual case study. And it became a classic in talking about the life of somebody on the margins in, in American society. You can also have... Um, uh, sets of case studies, individual case studies, um, and I mean, just as an example of this, um, I, mean, I, this is, I don't think this has actually been carried out, um, but um, um, three general, general practices you might study. So if you're looking at um, the, uh, the health service and you want to look at some of the changes, particularly now with the, the big changes going on in the role of, of um, of general practitioners in the health service, you might do a contrast of, of three different general practices. So looking at three single practices, notice here the practice is the case, the practice is the group of doctors and all the other ancillary workers, the nurses and the um, receptionists and so on, who work together to, uh, to do the, the work of the practice. And you might compare three individual practices 
practices that way, perhaps picking a very large one, a very small one, or, or one out in the countryside and one in a town and, and one in the suburbs and so on, to get a range of different cases. I'll talk more about that kind of procedure of how you pick separate cases uh, in a later slide. Going a bit further there, another, another uh, classic area of case studies has been the community studies approach, where there are loads of people involved, lots and lots of participants, um, whole communities, may even be thousands of people involved, but it's one community, it's picked upon for some particular reason. Um, and just to give you two very diverse examples here, um, there's a, a classic study done back in the 1950s originally, went into the 60s I think, on family and kinship in East London, um, where the researchers, sociologists doing the work picked a, an area of East London, a um, fairly poor district of East London, um, and they basically did a very intensive case study with the people living there, um, and they, they stayed there, they interviewed them, they, they recorded what was going on, they observed them, uh, they of course kept documents that were being kept about the local authority, by the local authority and so on. So they've got a range of different data coming in and talked about the, the kind of life of effen effectively a, a working class community in Britain uh, just after the Second World War. By contrast, an earlier study uh, done just before the Second World War, the Azandi in the Sudan, was a similar kind of approach, but this time done by an anthropologist, in fact it was Evans Pritchard, a very famous British anthropologist, working with the Azandi, which I think is now, if I'm not right in saying, there's an area which is now in South Sudan. Um, um, it's you know, the new country in, in, in Africa. Um, he was working there when it was still a British colony, of course, uh, back in the pre-war period, pre-Second World War period. Um, and um, he, he basically lived with the, the group of people called the Azandi who spoke similar language, that's why they were called the Azandi. Um, oh, actually, no, I think it's the Azandis on the border between South Sudan and Congo, that's where it's it cited. So he might have been in the Congo some of the time as well. Um, and he lived and worked with them for several years and, and wrote a classic study about their beliefs, about their ideas and so on. Particularly, he was fascinated by their notions of magic and witchcraft and so on, what role that had in, in, in their life. Um, so, you know, two community studies, one anthropological and one, one based in, in the UK in a much more kind of sociological approach to, to things, but using similar techniques of observation and so on. There have been other studies looking at social groups. So rather than defining it by a place, you know, the, the town in, 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 the, in the case of the... Um, East London study or the, the, the villages and the area in the case of the Azandi study. In this case, it, the, the definition of the, 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 um, the case is by virtue of some kind of social phenomenon. And uh, in this case, I've chosen as an example how Becker's study of, of marijuana smokers. Um, and again, it's quite an old study um, going right back to the, um, the 1950s and 60s period. Um, but it, he basically chose just a few people, uh, just a few people who were um, regular smokers of marijuana or um, hash or whatever they called it, uh, and were also musicians. And, and the, the things were tied up together. Being musicians was tied up with drug taking and so on um, amongst that group of people. So a small group of people defined by their, their social position of being musicians and drug takers and looked at how their lives were, were led, how their drug taking um, basically was, was, was part of their, their, their musical life and so on. Um, it's a study that came up with the idea that you have to learn how to appreciate the effect of drugs and things like this, it's that in fact just taking drugs isn't good enough, you're having to learn certain things with it as well. Going further to, to the larger scale, um, we can define actual organisations, institutions. I've already mentioned um, the, the, the idea of you know, studying an election. Uh, you could say the political parties involved, for example. Um, but in these cases, uh, these are studies of, of particular um, organisations. Um, in one case, working for Ford, it was a car factory. Hubenian study of that actually went to, to, to live and work inside the, the, the factory um, and worked with the, the, um, the workers in the factory, worked alongside them, observed them, and of course talked to them and so on, in that typical anthropological fashion, ethnographic fashion. Um, in contrast, Nigel Fielding, um, he, uh, I think it was his PhD study, so many years ago now, about 30 years ago, 
um, study the National Front. And what he did was actually, as a postgraduate researcher, quite a dangerous and quite a brave thing to do, I think, he actually joined in the National Front. He actually went along to meetings and, and, and activities with them and talked to them, of course, to find out what, what they thought. A real inside insight into what the, the National Front is a, a far-right organisation, or it was then. I think it's now defunct, been taken over by other far-right organisations, but a kind of a fascist-type organisation in, in British politics. Quite a dangerous thing to do, uh, to, to get involved in that, particularly with the kind of things he came out and published later on. He wasn't sympathetic, I have to say, to, to them. So did quite they, an interesting... Did he do that sort of undercover, or did they know that he was doing that? I think it was partly, partly undercover and partly not. Was, I, su I think some people then knew that he was a researcher, but a lot of them didn't know. It wasn't, kind of, it wasn't you know, he didn't kind of wear it on his... Well, I don't know about echelons, but maybe some people knew where he was from and what his background was, but, but not everybody did. And uh, I'm actually not sure. You, you're right, in some cases it's done that way. You, 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 you get permission at the top, but those lower, lower down don't know. But I'm not sure he did that. It might have been he had certain, certain you know, neighbours of his or something knew it and, he, and knew his background, but, but actually maybe other people in the higher echelons didn't know what was going on. There certainly was a big fuss. <laughs> after he published his results that um, the National Front weren't all pleased about, about the results. And then last example, some events as cases. Um, uh, in this case, I've given two, two, um, two things. I suppose I'm not even sure really wh whether housewife is an event as such. I, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a role, isn't it, really, rather than an event, but other kinds of things, roles and relationships. Uh, uh, an Oakley study of house, uh, called Housewife, uh, the book she published, uh, was a study of what it was like to be a housewife. Um, and it was a very important study in, in suddenly bringing open an area that hadn't been studied before by, by, by sociologists. Um, and of course, w was accounting for probably close to half the population's uh, experience of, of life, what it was like to be a, a housewife. Um, the Cuban Missile Crisis, there have been lots of studies of this, but another <coughs> big event in this case, one single thing that, 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 in fact, there was a lot in the media recently about this because it was an anniversary um, a, a week or so ago of the crisis itself when the, uh, the Soviet Union um, positioned some um, nuclear weapons in Cuba and the Americans got very upset about that and wanted them to withdraw them. And for a, for a time, there were, it was on the nuclear brink, so to speak, as to whether the United States and the Soviet Union would actually fire weapons at each other. So a huge crisis in international politics, and there's been a lot of studies about that and, and what happened as a case study. And of course, you can look at that by looking at what the actors did, um, what they said, um, what, what they wrote, and you know, what TV programs they made, and so on. There's enormous amounts of data you can use to, to bring into that case study. OK, so what I've done, tried to do here, then, is to give you some idea of the, the range of case study approaches. So a bit about how they collected the data. So you can see that, that it's definitely this kind of, of um, holistic approach to research, of bringing in things from various sources and looking at things in their context. Um, and that all of them have in common this notion of defining what a case is. And, and that's an issue we'll come back to later on. <coughs> 